Hi, and welcome to Get Fit with Gaston. I'm Kayla Fox. Our guest today is fitness instructor Yawanda Thompson. Welcome, Yawanda. Thank you, Kayla. All right, the first thing I want to ask you, what are we going to be doing today? What kind of workouts are we We're doing? We're going to be doing what I call functional fitness, and that's an all-body workout. And what functional fitness is, it works your body in every plane of motion, okay. just like everyday life movements. Okay. All right, so how typically how hard is this workout? The workout could be as hard or as light as you want it to be. And okay. if you were a, a great instructor and you just happen to be with one today, <laughs> lucky you, yes, lucky they me. will modify it. So we will modify it accordingly. If I see that I need to bring you down, I'll bring you down. But I would call this an intermediate workout. Okay. That's good for okay. me. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's good for you. Okay, so um, for someone like me, you know, work out occasionally, but it's not a routine thing. What are some things that you can do to prepare yourself and prepare your body for the workout so that you're not, you know, going too hard at it when you first start out? When you first start out, you got to be mindful of your sleep. I know this might sound like it has nothing to do with it, but you really got to get good rest. Yeah. L at least mount at seven hours. You really need to be up on your water. So that's whatever you weigh, half your body weight in ounces of water, okay, really wow. need to be hydrated. You really need to bring your sports strength on your first day and take it easy. You don't want to knock yourself out with injuries and now you're out the box. Right. So just take it easy in the beginning, listen to yourself, start pushing yourself maybe two to three weeks after you've been in a routine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier about the machines at places like Planet Fitness, you know, the YMCA. Do you use any machines in your workout or is it strictly Negative. Yeah. <laughs> All my students know me. They know I'm like so poo-poo on machines. <laughs> if you're sick, great. If you have older clients, great. If I got somebody off a of rehab, great. I put mm -hmm. them in there. But if you are a healthy individual and you're okay, you want to be standing up, erect, working out because you're requiring all your muscle fibers to engage you right. therefore you're burning more calories so you're yeah. gonna get more bang for your buck when you're erect and lifting weights at the same time with a little splash of aerobic intensity in there as well okay that's good yeah. so typically how long is your workout that you do with your classes I don't think that you should need to go over an hour with a class or individual when I do one-on-one -on -one. and a lot of people I do maybe 45 minutes even 35 minutes okay. you should be able to get in and out of there people who stay in the gym two hours too much yeah. unless that's your profession if right. it's your profession I understand if you're a regular Joe an hour should suffice okay so shows like T25 and insanity things like that like they focus more on you know doing a workout in 25 minutes and like yes. really pumping it you know the yes. whole time and going hard is that do you believe with that? Yeah, that'll work. And of course, you will have to work yourself up to that. A person right. who's not in shape probably can't do that at first. But like myself, I can probably blow in there and do something. But mm -hmm. let me just say this. Any workout is better than zero workout during yeah. a day. So yeah, you can get it in in 25 to 35 minutes. As long as you're getting that heart rate up, what is important is how the sequence of exercises is going in the okay. P90X and, and, and Insanity. If you notice, they have a great sequence where they get the heart rate up, mm -hmm. and then maybe you bring it back down and up and down bang for your buck, bigger bang. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you want to show me a little bit of what you're going to be doing today? Sure. Okay. No problem. All right. I'm ready to go. Let's okay. Start. Okay, guys. First, I want to start off with the proper way to work out. A lot of people work out improperly, and what happens is that causes imbalances, and that will end up in injuries. And we don't want injuries because injuries will knock you out of the game and then you can't get your workout. So I'm going to show you a quick 15 minute workout. But what is important is how you start, what you do in the middle, how you cool down. So the first thing I want to talk about is a foam roller. So my uh, partner here, uh, Bailey, has a foam roller. Her, as, as you can see, her foam roller is short. Mine's is long. And they come in different uh, densities as well. This one is harder. This one is softer. I'm going to use the harder one because I need to get some knots out of my body. What do we need a foam roller for? A foam roller should precede any of your workout every time, whether you are an athlete or a regular person workout. Think of the foam roller as your own personal masseuse. What it's doing is ironing out the knots underneath your skin. We all have them. You will never know you have it until you roll. So you want to roll those knots out so your skin will be nice and smooth. The muscles will be lengthened. When we work out, we shorten the muscle. So this is going to lengthen that muscle so you can achieve your fitness goal more safely. So we're going to start out, we're going to take it to the floor. And we're going to start out with the biggest muscle in the body, which is your Gluteus maximus, right, Bailey? All right, so let's take it to the floor. What we want to do is we're going to sit right on the gluteus maximus, which is in the middle of your uh, nice butt. 
all right, for lack of a better term. And we're just gonna roll. Now, a lot of people just wanna roll on the foam roller. It's not just about rolling. What you're doing is looking for sore spots. Now, I don't have a lot of sore spots on my glutes, so what I'm gonna do is move on. Do you feel anything, Bailey? <laughs> if you did feel anything, what you would do is hold, because literally a knot, and this is called SMR, what we're doing, which stands for self myofascia releasing. So we're releasing the knot. So when you find a knot, you wanna sit on it, let that pressure release underneath the skin, and then move on. So my glutes are good, so I'm going on a hammy. Here's your hamstring. All right, so we're gonna start here, and we're just gonna roll it back <clears throat> and forward. How you feeling that? I don't feel anything. You feel any knots? No knots, don't waste time. We're good, we're moving on. Gastrocnemius and soleus, AKA our calves. Add a little tension, roll it forward and back. What do you feel? So I'm gonna walk it up. You gotta have a little strength to do this too now. Upper body, working, abs, tight. All right, that feels good as well. So we're gonna move on. All right. So we're gonna go in the front of our legs. If you're a big time runner, this can be sore as well. Lean on it. <clears throat> Your tibialis now we're working back and forth. What else do you think we're working here? What do you feel, daily? Our core is working. All right, so you're getting a little. Your arm's working as well. So we're warming up. All right, we're gonna release that. All right, so one of the main things that stays sore on me is what we call our IT band. So we're gonna actually sit back, lay sideways on the foam roller, and start at your knee. So place it down at your knee, or close to it. See if you could put both legs on each other, and just roll it up, and all the way to your hip, walk it out. So this is hitting. I don't have any more sore spots. I did. Had a lot of knots, now they're gone. All right, and then we'll skip that, but you can flip it on the other side and do the same thing. Now let's have a seat back on the foam roller. Take your ankle, place it on your knee. Good. Actually turn to that right glute a little bit. This is what we call a piriformis roll. All right, gluteus medius, piriformis. Tends to be nice and sore if you work out a lot. What do you feel there? Anything? No, you're good then. You're nice and stretched. All right, you tend to get a little dirty doing this. That's the downside. All right, let's flip the other leg. Turn it and roll. All right, so I'm good with that. No sore spots. Now we're gonna drop our bun bun to the floor. Gonna work on that back. We hold a lot of tension and stress in our back and our upper shoulders. So go ahead and just lean over, Bailey. Put your hands behind your head. Create a body. Oh, Are you okay? Good. All right. Go ahead and create a bind here and open those pec muscles up. Good. Now just slightly roll your traps and rhomboids. All right, so any knots that we have, we're loosening them up so that we'll be ready to do some good work. And then just hold. Just open up, drop your butt to the floor, and then open your chest up. Abs are tight. All right. And roll it up. All right, and so we're finished with the foam roller. There's a million things you could do with the foam roller, but I'm just showing you some quick tips today. All right, next we're gonna do what I call dynamic stretching. All right, I like to do this. What dynamic stretching means is we're not static stretching, we're in motion. So we're gonna actually start from here. And Bailey, you can sit right here, stand right here. And we're gonna walk forward and these are Frankenstein. So we're gonna look like Frankenstein. And we're warming up our hamstrings. Good, take it back, same thing. Good. All right, now we're gonna hit heel taps in the front. Still working on our uh, inside thigh. Adductors, abductors, piriformis, warming it up. So dynamic stretching, what does that mean for us, Bailey? Stretching but in motion? So you're in motion. Yes, take it back. Now we're warming our quads up. Let's 
Let's go into hip circumduction, warm that up. So a lot of athletes you'll notice, <clears throat> you'll notice them doing this on the football field. Let's do it again. So why do we do this? We're letting the body know we're about to work out. Not a static stretch. Let's take our arch taps. But we want to go in motion. We're going to wait till we finish our workout and then we'll static stretch. All right, we're going to add a little run to this now. Butt kicks, nice and slow. Still warming up, sending a signal to the body. We just want to get ready to work out. Good. All right, and that's it with that. Now we're nice and warm. How do you feel? My heart rate's up a little bit. All right, moving on. All right, number one thing people always ask me about, how to get my arms right, how to get my abs tight. First off, you gotta quit eating all those Ho-Hos and Twinkies <laughs> because 80% of your success is from what, Bailey? Diet, all right? So we can work out till the cows come home, but if you're gonna go home and eat too much, forget about it. You're gonna be what I call tight fat. What's tight fat? You work out, but you're not losing any weight. So now you're still fat. You're tight, but you're fat, all right? So we don't want that. All right, let's take it to the floor. Take one weight. I'm gonna show you some of my top ab routines. That's helped me keep my fist fat. All right, so first off, we're not gonna do this one weight. We're gonna take it back. We're gonna bring our legs up. This is called a pike. What is it working? My four pack. You got a six pack. This is working the top of the rectus abdominis. All right, here we go. Take it up. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release. Do a full body stretch for me so we won't catch any cramps in our abs. We're going to ramp it up. Let's go to 15 this time. Back up. Here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And release. And bring it up. Hold your abs in at the bottom. Arms up. Go up with your belly. Put to the ceiling. And release. All right, so that's your rectus abdominis. So let's talk about the parts of your abs. You have your rectus abdominis. You have your transverse abdominis. You have your internal and your external obliques. Therefore, and if you hit all of these areas, boom, six pack plus 80% clean eating. All right, now we're going to Russian twist. All right, so let's grab the weight if you can. If you can't, that's fine. Modify it, no weight. All right, bend at the knees, lean back two inches, and you can add a bicycle or not. It's on you. All right, you ready? Let's go for 20. One, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and release. Good, we do about a five second break in between. We're going right back in, just enough to let the lactic acid come up out. I feel good, that wasn't too many for me. How about you? Oh, your tailbone. So if your tailbone, if you ain't got enough junk in your trunk, or whatever's going on, I got enough junk for mine. <laughs> you can go ahead and double up. So she's gonna double up for her tailbone, won't hurt. Right back at it. Are you ready, Bales? Lean it back, let's go. Three, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Woo! All right, let's take that stretch. Full body. <sighs> Woo, that's the good part. All right, so this is my favorite one because it hits all those areas I told you about, the rectus, the transverse, internal, external obliques. And the reason why I know it does work is because everybody complains. So when my clients or my students complain, I know it's, it's working. All right, so we're gonna do X's and O's. No, you don't remember? Okay, we're gonna start off in an X. We're gonna end in an O. Got it? No, wait, we gonna do that? Happy New Year, here we go. Up, let's go, X. So you don't lay down on your X. No laying down, right back up. Come on, come on, Bill. Four, five, 
Give me five more. Five, four, three, two, hold. Ooh, release. Good job. Stretch it out. That's X's and O's. We're gonna do two sets. Do 15 more of those. Hitting every area of my abs, okay? This thing works. Here we go, second set. Woo, this is the X, let's get the O, come on. Up, two, five, three, four, five, six, you okay? Seven, eight, breathe, nine, on the way up, 10, really. Woo, gotta love it, happy new year. All right, let's flip it over. All right, so you can work your abs supine. That was supine. All right, supine means on your spine. Now we're going prone. Infamous. Roll it back. We're gonna hold a plank. Everybody loves the plank. All right, you should be able to hold a plank for 30 seconds. That's the standard. All right, we're gonna start in five seconds. We're gonna start low. Begin. All right, the plank. No booty in the air. No thinking. Right here. I think we are halfway through. 15 seconds. A little bit more. Five seconds. And release. Full body stretch. Now what we're gonna do to get our heart rate up in between is we're gonna add some cardio. Do you remember plank jacks? As, all right, so I'll show you real quick what a plank jack is. It's a plank, it's progressed, meaning it's a step up, big step up. So if you can't hold a plank for 30 seconds, don't try this yet. You can come on with me. I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. All right, we can do it this way. That's modified, or we're gonna do it this way. All right, pick your poison. You ready, Bale? Go into 10. Begin. 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Release and take a big break here. Recover. Get your breath. Second set. We're up. Begin. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Release. Whew. What do you think about that? Let's get back on our mat and do a quick child's pose. We're gonna stretch in between. Give your body a quick break. Driving our hips back towards our heels. Bring it on up. Let's go back into that plank and push up. Tilt your head back, the back of your shoulder. For our up dog. Sit back, child's pose. And back forward for up dog. Okay, good job. All right, so we're gonna move on to some upper body routine. All right, and what I like to do when we work the upper body is, once I talked about in the beginning functional fitness, we're gonna use our body at every plane of motion and we're gonna add weight. I like doing combo workout, meaning not just the arm, not just the leg, because it burns more calories. All right, let's grab our weight. All right, we're gonna do a sumo squat, bicep curl to shoulder press. Get hyped on this sumo break. squat, it's the only thing different this one, Bailey, is our feet are gonna go out, all right, like this. Why? Because we're gonna hit the inside thigh, which we call the adductors, all right? So we're gonna get in that like a plie. All right, we're gonna take it down. Squat, bicep curl, shoulder press. All right, we're exhaling, we go up. Here's three, here's four, here's five, here's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, give me two more, one, 
and two. All right, drop the weights in between. We're gonna get our heart rate up. Grab your mat again for me, Bailey. So I like to lift weights. Get hyped on this break. And then I like to get your heart rate up. So we're gonna get the heart rate up real quick. Now your right foot on the mat, left foot off. We're gonna go up and over with a tap, all right? So we're gonna be over and over. All right, so your right foot's on. Left foot tap, there you go. Now switch, good, keep going. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, so what we're gonna do now is end it with our static stretch. All right, so we're gonna grab the end of this yoga belt. All right, love this part because this means exercising is over. All right, so now we shortened our muscles, right? Now we're gonna lengthen them. All right, supine position. <clears throat> you can get these yoga belts anywhere, TJ Maxx, Target, et cetera, et cetera. Probably about five to seven dollars. And you're gonna put it on the arch of your foot. You're gonna lean back. You're gonna lock your knee, and you're just gonna bring it back. Now, I like a little extra tension, so what I do is I take the yoga belt, and I place my head, place it behind my head. My head is extra tension. Hamstring, one of your longest muscles. Number one to get injured next to the IT band. All right, so ordinarily we will hold that for at least 30 to 60 seconds. And now we're gonna move it in. Now we're working on that IT band. Piriformis, getting a nice stretch. All right, let it go back up with me, Bale. Now come out laterally. Now we're working that adductor, stretching that. Wanna make sure both shoulders and both hips are glued to the mat. Abs pulled in tight. And up and over for a lower lumbar. You're gonna look the opposite direction of where your leg is. And you're gonna add a little tension here so we can lengthen that IT band. And release, and now you can take it over to the other leg, same thing. You wanna be balanced out. All right, lock the knee, up and over. Place the weight of your head or not, wherever you are. Lengthen that right leg for me, Bell. Good, glue your hips to the floor. Dorsey flex that left foot if you can, which means to take your toes towards your forehead. Feel that nice stretch. Bring it in. Piriformis stretch. Good, lengthen and out laterally. All right, adductor, which is your inside thigh. Shoulders and hips glued firmly. A lot of times we want to roll over. You don't want to do that. Abs tight. Up and over. Lower lumbar. Look in the opposite direction. And release. There you have it. Quick workout. Again, this is Ewanda Thompson and my partner Bailey. And thanks for joining us. That's your 15-minute workout.